This is an eccentric weight vibration motor from a Fitbit Alta HR that I disassembled last night. Here we can see the unit when I pop the top off. This is the bottom of the unit right here. This is me prying the bottom out. You can see the bottom is removed. There's the sensors and the top and bottom. That's the screen. Fortunately, the screen has a little zip connector that I was able to pull off without damaging it. I use tweezers to undo these two security screws. Torx T1, very difficult to remove. Meg took a few pictures of me using the tweezers as a screwdriver like this. It was incredibly difficult, actually. There's a close-up, like that. From another angle, I got one out, this is the other. This is the circuit board and all the parts here. Here's the case. I've pried the vibration motor out. And you can see the board logic right there. I've attached to it two silicon insulated nickel plated copper braided wires for which I've used a silver solder and used a very uh, precise electronic soldering iron to attach these wires to the two points here. If we take a triple A battery like this and we take the negative side and impinge it on the spring from a flashlight, what we'll end up with here is a way of firing up this little motor. These parts are from the camera mount that's actually currently holding my phone. I'm going to show you how they assemble. So, this piece of hardware drops into there like that. This piece of kit is designed to have this trim ring installed, like this. This piece goes into here like that. That piece goes on here. Like this. And when you tighten this, it regulates the movement of that. So if we tighten it all the way, that becomes rigid. This goes onto this piece here. And this is designed so that when you when you mount a camera piece to here, you can adjust exactly where it fits snug by moving this you know, rubbery plastic piece up to snug it fit so you can get a very precise angle. Um, this is what's known as a slide interlock mount. It also has a standard thread. But if you do slide interlock it into a piece that clips on, you can then use the trim ring to tighten it. And conveniently, because it's been machined flat on the end, it will stand on end like that. This is a voltmeter. In order to turn it on, you select a mode. That symbol means DC. That V with the squiggle means AC. These are measurements for resistance or um, capacitance. These are measures for resistance, kilo ohms, mega ohms. We're gonna test a AAA battery. So we're gonna go down to zero through two volts DC. And we're going to pull out the integrated kickstand like this and set it up so that you can see the voltage. You can see the ends over here. We've got a positive in my right hand. The ISO designation for positive and DC circuits is red. And a negative or black cable. These are plugged into these ports on here. Black is common or negative. And you see here the voltage one. 
This port here is for measuring current. We're not doing that. We're gonna arrange the battery so that the positive is on the right and the negative is on the left. And then we're going to touch these terminals here on the ends. There it is. 1.518. An alkaline primary battery like this starts out at about 1.6 and has a linear discharge down to about one volt towards the end of life or 0% charge. This is a USB power adapter made by Samsung. What it does is, you can read there, it can take anything from 100 to 200 volts at 50 or 60 hertz, and it converts it to five volts DC at 700 milliamps. This section plugs into the hot, the neutral, the hot and the neutral. And when you do that, power is put into this USB type A connector here. We see up here, there's a micro USB connector that plugs into the base of this unit, like that. And when we do that, we see the battery percentage displayed here on this Galaxy Gear something or other watch. This is known <clears throat> Samsung Gear S3. Okay, that's a heart rate sensor. It uses those two LEDs to the side and side and that camera sensor in there to shine light into the skin of the wrist of the wearer. And then the camera takes pictures of the skin and through optical inferometry, it can determine um, blood oxygen saturation and the pulse rate. Inside the back of this glass or ceramic housing is a coil of wire. Inside this inductive charging base, up here is another coil of wire. And through something called electromagnetic induction, when we apply the watch, we see that it starts charging. And what's happening is a magnetic, electromagnetic field is forming in the one coil, and it induces the same field in the other coil. And inside the watch, a charging circuit rectifies that uh, voltage and turns it into DC in order to charge the battery. And in this case, uh, also operate the unit. As a correction, this is a um, Samsung Gear S3 Frontier. It belonged to my brother-in-law, Drake Doyle. Um, I inherited it when he died, sadly. And I just busted it out of storage. Beautiful. This is an Apple charging brick. Five volt, one amp, worldwide adaptable, 100 to 240 volts AC in, 50 or 60 hertz at 0.15 amps, very energy efficient. Spits out five volts DC at one amp of current through the USB type A connector. We can plug a USB cable like this. This one happens to be for this electromagnetic induction charger. The way this works is an Apple Watch, any generation, just magnetically couples. But once you get it coupled there, you can see it plugs into the back. And the way this works is in this unit here, you can see one, there's a whole collection of LEDs going around the edge there. And then there's a um, sensor suite in the center. And what it does is it shines the light into your skin. And then that camera sensor suite there measures the different frequencies. Um, this specific watch is called a SE in 40 millimeter aluminum. They used ion X glass and it is a ceramic um, case back. Inside this ring here is a electromagnetic induction coil linked to the charging circuit for the battery and circuit board here. 
and a corresponding coil inside the head of the charging adapter here. When these two bond like that, the coil inside the white charging adapter is in close proximity and magnetically coupled like that to the crown back or case back raised bump that perfectly aligns the coils. And it can rotate freely. Um, <clears throat> and what this does is it transfers current from the charging brick through the cable into the watch to accomplish charging the battery. Okay, to see what that looks like, we're gonna plug in the adapter here, like that. What we'll do here is place the Apple Watch on the dock and we'll see it's about 30% charged. If we flip this around here and light it up, we can flip up from the bottom and see 38% charged. If you click on the charge state here, it'll show you that it's charging and it also gives you an option for the reserve power. <clears throat> we see that we're connected to Wi-Fi. We could turn that off. We could click this button over here to locate the phone if I press it. So if we scroll through these settings, that's do not disturb, like theater mode. That's a I'm going to bed mode. This is airplane mode. This one turns the screen bright to act like a flashlight. There's blinking mode. There's a red mode. We see that it's Sunday, the 5th day of June, 2020, 8.50 a.m. Um, that thing there is the decibel meter. It tells you in ISO or International Standard Organization or um, decibels, and that's a measure of sound pressure level. This is my activity ring summary. So these rings indicate that since I've been awake at, since 5 a.m. this morning, I've um, engaged in almost no exercise. I've been standing and walking around a lot like that. There's descriptive statistics if you scroll down. So here's my calories burned out of my goal, my exercise minutes, my standing, and it shows little graphs like that, little charts. Um, if you go down here, it shows you a weekly summary. Now don't judge me, I've been really sick with a virus, but it shows me calorie totals, average calories, steps, distance, flights climbed, activity minutes. I haven't been able to breathe hardly at all, so all of my stats are way off. I've been sick for about 10 days with a nasty virus I acquired on a school bus. Um, we see the weather here, 61, mostly cloudy, a high of 64, and a low of 54. I like this particular screen design because it's um, information rich. You can go like this to all the different apps on here. You can pinch to, or you can go like this to zoom in and out. And it'll, it'll zoom quite far either way. Um, um, emojis or some kind of, I, I'm not sure. I don't normally play with any of that. I mainly flip up here to the settings. We see this is not a very fast charging solution. If you turn features on and off, the little tray up there tells you what you've activated. We don't have any active notifications. There's also a button on the side. If we click that, it shows recently activated things like that. <clears throat> well, there it is, Apple's least expensive watch. Um, it's actually a great value proposition. I bought it at Costco. I gave my Series 5 Apple Watch to Meg. I've had several generations of these. They're much more elegant than Fitbits. We tried those as far back as 2010 and 11, and I have a... Uh, Nice association with those. They're they're cool. They have a better sleep tracking function than the Apple Watch does. Meg got me this coffee cup 
As you can tell, I drink coffee every morning. It's my favorite part of the day. <clears throat> Usually I charge my phone and my Apple Watch during this period. Today I happen to be playing with uh, the late Drake Doyle's Galaxy S3 Frontier Watch. And you can see uh, it's at 76% charge and charging on its dock. So both this Apple Watch and that Samsung Watch charge inductively, which is a much better solution than what Fitbit uses with those clumsy pin-based charging cables.